Hi friends! It's that time again. Ink flight. Very excited. It's just it's, this is the smallest box I've seen so far. I got my little notebook of Tamoy River paper. I've got my coloring cards. I've got paintbrush, a steel dip pen, a glass pen. Uh, oh, I've got water, which was here the whole time, and I didn't just go run to get it because I forgot. Um, <clears throat> and I don't really have a chair. Uh, I'm on the back of my cutting mat. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Also, off screen, I have some rags. Um, I can't really just get a normal chair because I'm too short. So, let's open this. Let's see what we got. Very excited. So, the inks. What do we have here? Oh, I need my glasses. Okay. This is from Otto. I think, yeah, look at that. Super teeny travel fountain pen. I have an inktopus with a cocktail with an umbrella. And, ooh, book darts. These are dope. I have some of these already. They're um, little bookmarks, but they're very low profile. So you can leave them in the book to find pages that you want to mark. This is gonna be really useful for some stuff I'm doing right now. And I like, this is uh, multiple colors, so like copper, brass, and a chrome, I'm guessing. Um, and then goodbye in various languages. Maybe they should tell us hello. Okay, so this says, Oto Taske, pocket fountain pen, measuring a petite, Four ounces, inches closed. The Oto Taske fountain pen easily fits wherever you need to stash an on the go writing instrument. Pull the bottom end of the barrel to unsheath the writing end of the pen. When the Oto Taske's cap is posted on the back, the pen extends to a full sized five and three quarter inches in length. From Oto, Japan, this aluminum fountain pen. Packs ample writing ability in a compact design. This stainless steel nib, tipped in iridium, fills using international sized ink cartridges. Sorry, no converter available. To fill the pen, unscrew the grip section for the back access to the cartridge and plug it in. So that's exciting. And I have, um, whatchamacallit, so I can just refill these. You know, syringes. Then book darts. Uh, brass, bronze, and stainless steel, it says. Um, so, very cool. And this month's inks are Sailor. This is we. Let's see, are they any colors I have? They are not colors that I have. Yes, I think these are the new ones that are supposed to be like promo shaders depending on the paper you use so let's set you aside and you aside here we go to look at our inks had to open the window and get my ink pep so we've got uh, I like to do these in order because that's what Amanda made me do uh, Ama Moyoi, Itezora, Yo Yoi, Kanyo, Kyoko, Seki, and Kyokuya. Super exciting. Let's start with the one that you put in here already, Maria. 
get that. And let's get our brush pre wetted. To be careful because there is ink all over this, and I don't want to re wet the ink and get ink all over me and so on. Um, This is not going to be my favorite color. But they shouldn't all be. These are fairly watery inks. Um, I think we all knew they would be. Uh, so this says, at the heart of this mossy green color is a juicy violet. see violet I see peach but then next up we have itezora This one I might like more. For myself, obviously, you know, subjectively. So, This is hard. I'm standing and apologies for the noise. Um, I'm standing too high to write. That blob right there bothers me. So, Sailor Yurimeka Itezora, like the early dawn sun appearing behind a calm sea, this ink's dusky aqua blue harbors clouds of pink. Yeah, I see that. I also see green in here. Whoo! Ama Moyoi just did some really interesting things. I feel like I need another sheet of paper to really do these justice. Uh, if only I had a whole stack of it from bookbinding. Um, now we have Yo Yi. Yo Yi. Oh my gosh. Yep. 
Mhm. This might have to go in a pin. Don't you love that sound? Is it just me? Do you also like the sound of like the the breeze through the trees? Are we having a moment right now together? Are we hanging by a moment? Probably not. So, yo e, this medium toned gray ink has some purple and green lurking below the surface. So that's what's interesting is when it goes on, I absolutely love the color. When it dries, it's turning more green. That probably depends on how uh, broad a line, but who knows. Let's do this. Let's put you back. Let's put you here. We have Kung, Kung, Kungyo. Apologies to those of you that actually speak Japanese for my butchery of your beautiful language. I do at least know that the U doesn't make it U, it makes it a longer O. That's something, right? <laughs> Every time I'm writing Yurameku, I am like doubting myself. Ooh. Look what happened with that ink. Oh, these want to have their chromatography done, don't they? Mm-hmm. I think they do. Yeah. Now we have Kyoku. Kyoko. Oh, we didn't say about Kangyo. Kangyo, this bluish gray ink exhibits shading with violet and green patina. Yeah, oh, that one. Lovely. Okay. Maybe I should put one of these into my sailor pen. like the appropriateness of that.
This is perfect. I'm not running out of ink every second letter. Okay, okay. I don't um, generally, I write on these afterwards with like a, a permanent waterproof type pen to write the ink flight month, in case I need to find that again for some reason. So Kyoko Dusky Pink color is offset with cyan and green shading. And we have Seki. And this says this warm beige color serves as a base for magenta and green tones. I feel like these inks would be fun ones to just play with. To just like draw on lots of papers and just watch the ink, you know? Oh, my ride's almost here. Just kidding. This is the cleanest my thing of water has ever looked. This is so amazing to watch dry. I hope you have enjoyed that as it has been in front of you. And last up, Kyo Kuya. Kyo Kuya. Kyo Kuya. Okay, and mm. the initial color reminds me of Mangler, but it's been a minute or two since I looked at that one, so. And this feels like the most pigmented, certainly like the most lubricated of the inks. So Here's the water. Still mostly clear. Um, let's lay out the inks and look at them. Should we do, I feel like we should do chromatography because that'll be like so fun for these. Okay, so we're gonna line them up. And I did go get 
um, some chromatography papers because um, I wanted to. So here's all of these and the drastically different colors they make on Tomoe River paper. Um, so here is Amamoyoi Fascinating. Next up is Itezora. Yoi. Love this. Don't love this. Kangyo. I like it in both forms. Kyo Kyo. Seems like it might be a bit light. Seki. Wow. And Kyokuya. These look like different inks. So this ink, um, when it was announced, there was this like, it, they say it's going to look different on different papers. Kind of furor. Furor? Whatever. About it. And it certainly holds up. So let us... Draw a line. I feel like that's a really thin line. Across these papers. We'll get the first one going. Got my trusty hair clips. Hopefully. Feels like an awkward way to do this, but okay. Apparently, you're supposed to let them dry hanging, so that's a thing that's not happening. At least not right now. I like leaving them in the water until I see clear water above the color. Apparently my neighbors like that too. They're very enthusiastic for me. Thanks neighbor. Um, these would be, I think, pretty cool inks to make art with. Watercolor style, you know. Holy cow! There's some magic going on in here. 
Oh my goodness. I am wiping this pretty thoroughly between them. Okay, you ready? You're right. You're not, no, nobody's ready for this, Maria. They can't be. That's, if that's one that is, to my eyes, brown, and I suppose it's not surprising If you've got all the primary colors, that's what you'll end up with. Okay. Dope, dope, dope. this one in. Very still. I need maybe a pasta rack. I mean, I want a pasta rack anyway for pasta, but then, I mean, if you convince me that I need a pasta rack to dry chromatography swatches on, I feel like I might be more likely to buy it. I don't know what that says about me that I suppose we already knew I was weird this other one these two make me think of like ice cream sort of sherbet or This one specifically really made me think of like, do you remember those like ice cream popsicles that you would get as a kid that were like Pac-Man or the ghost and they'd have like gumball eyes? Except for Charmer members. Let's make sure this is up. Okay. This was a very exciting addition to our plans for, for swatching today. Yeah, I made a bunch of really good decisions quickly. I should, while I'm thinking, thinking good and doing other stuff good too. Capitalize on that. I don't know what other stuff I need to do, but there's got to be something. So, here we go. Here are our chromatographies. How amazing are these? Really? Quite amazing? Very That blue looks like it could almost be slightly permanent. Same, look at this. Yoi and Kyokuya have very similar colors in them. This was one of the most fun ink vents. Maybe, I don't know which wins, this or the, um,
the April Fools where I got to do like riddly things. And, and I guess this one was so fun for me because I just like went off script and decided to do chromatography. And also I got inks that I'd wanted to, that I was curious about but probably wouldn't have bought. Which is amazing. Because I'll be honest, this one right here, I, I can't, I must have messed these up in order. It doesn't matter. Yoey? At any rate, hope you've enjoyed. I've been talking too long. This was Ink uh, Flight. I may have just called it something else. Look, this was Ink Flight for August 2022. It was amazing. Thanks for being on the journey with me. Bye.